What's up everybody? Today we are going to be looking in Ahrefs and I want to show you some really neat ways to quickly understand your niche and to improve your ideation. This is an advanced technique even though they're, they're really fundamentals that we're working on. I'm considering this more of an advanced technique because I, I want everybody to start with just the fundamentals, the basic process that we always follow that has worked for us the most reliably. But I have been an Ahrefs user for a while, um, and when we're doing search analysis and we need to go quickly, especially in a niche that I'm not super familiar with, boy, it has some really neat tools uh, to use. Okay, so we're going to be in Keywords Explorer today, and let's look at um, a niche like crafts. So here we get a little dashboard of data that, frankly, I don't use a whole lot. Here's where I do use. I'm going to go over on the left side. A lot of this is going to be left pane today. We're going to go to Phrase Match, and then this is giving us kind of an output of just a whole bunch of, of search phrases about crafts, right? But what I want you to see is how um, raw this output is. Uh, this is really going to just be giving just a fire hose of information. Um, here we have easy. Um, I don't know why it's not showing right now, but before when I searched this last time, it showed peasy as the word here, and I was like, peasy? And then I learned, oh, it's because there's a major crafting site called Easy Peasy Crafts. Um, and so that, so it was showing. So this is very raw. I want us to focus maybe a little bit more on this tab here that's parent topics. So this is super cool. What this is doing is it's taking all of the crafting searches and it's siloing it for us, right? And you know that we've told you a million times, don't focus on the search volume that the tools give you. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And I stand by that. But also what we've said is the reason is that they're extrapolating from a tiny data set to, uh, to make some pretty big assumptions. And so when this says it has a volume of 2,000, it could be 15,000, right? It could be 500. But um, when it does say there's a, a good amount of search volume, uh, you know, cert certainly over 10,000, maybe even over five, it's probably right or right enough to get an idea. Um, and so here where they're in a giant aggregate here, we can probably trust the volume pretty well um, on this part of the tool because it's looking at an aggregate of a lot of searches to, uh, to know this number. So like right away, I can see, oh, Michael's is a huge search term in crafts because it's a large crafting store in the United States at least. And so I say, oh, you know, I wouldn't have even thought of that, but could I write articles like my 21 favorite uh, uh, quilt fabrics at Michael's, uh, seven tips for saving money at Michael's, you know, things like that. Could I do a little silo of content? Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, and I can see it's a huge term here. Now, a lot of this is just going to be, you know, Michael's near me, uh, but there will be other terms as well. Okay, five minute crafts. That's really specific to be that that much volume. And so, wow, five minute crafts is one I could, I could go all in on knowing how big the volume is. It's cool to see Christmas crafts versus Halloween crafts versus Easter crafts. Uh, and you're able to just get a general idea for how much you should dedicate to different areas of your niche. Now, keep in mind that just because this is bigger than this doesn't mean you need to write more posts here than there. You may find in the competition that there are just not as, as many opportunities in one or the other. So you may take one far down the list and say, I want to write 10 posts on this, and that's okay too. So, so don't take it as gospel truth here, but it does help to see what's going on. Now, in, also in terms of what's going on, I like going down to this one, questions. This is taking all the question phrases and doing the same categorization, and I can twirl these down uh, to get a, a better idea of what it is. And so now I see, wow, like look at how big board is. That's huge in this, in, in this niche. And so now I see, it's going to help me when I write my titles now to say, you know, origami crafts 
to do when you're bored, things like that. Um, uh, that. That's really cool. So now I see bored, five minute crafts. I'm starting to see some things that are maybe more kid focused, maybe just quick uh, little entertaining things rather than like somebody taking on a months long patchwork quilt project. I can see, ah, oh, that's actually really, really big here. Now, I've just gotta know what death have to, <laughs> has to do with this. Death crafts, leading, leading cause of death for paddlers in small, oh, small crafts, okay. Uh, like a, that different kind of craft. And so uh, that is actually kind of cool because you do have to remember this is fire hose output right? This is not human curated list. And so it, it's interesting to see like words like peasy and death where it's brought into craft, uh, things like that. So I really like that. We can also go to uh, having same terms and also rank for that I think are valuable. But what we do need to talk about is what's in the center pane here. So one thing I really like doing is um, looking through some of these things really to see in buckets. You know, it's saying global volume, whatever. Let's look at all of them, 10,000 and up, and just see what general categories these are, are in. Again, we're not gonna trust that this means the search volume is really 4,000. It could be 20, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna look at a different niche now. We're gonna look at homeschool. I'm on phrase match and we've clicked over to parent topics, right? And this is where we see that easy peasy, right? So I'm gonna just search for one that I think, oh, I could do some content around this. How about homeschool schedule? Now this is where I think it brings in the value of the center pane. So these are all search phrases about homeschool schedules. Now, when I see a number that's 10,000, it's probably not crazy off. 5,000, it's at least helpful. Under 5,000, I just don't even care. It's probably just way off. It's, it's extrapolating from too small of a data set. And so the way most people use this is just not helpful. They're gonna say, oh, 180 day homeschool calendar only gets 20 searches, so I'm not gonna write that. That actually could be an amazing phrase to write about. Um, you could take this and then you also look around and one is a, a printable schedule and the other one is a yearly schedule. And you kind of craft a really cool resource of a full year printable schedule for middle school uh, at home, whatever, something like that. Uh, really bad title there, right? But um, you could take several of these and just kind of craft a really neat resource together Again, ignoring that search volume because a cool resource like that could just rank for homeschool schedule, right? It's not about one keyword, one article. Wrong approach. We're taking topics. We're taking resources that we could create that would help a problem. Not, not, it doesn't matter what specifically they typed in to get there. So what I would want to do if I'm writing, wanting to write, let's say I want to write three articles about homeschool schedule. Because we're not going problem and or you know keyword and answer, I might say we're trying to just get the psyche of somebody that's searching this. And so I might say something like, avoid these seven mistakes with your homeschool schedule. One of the printable schedule. Um, and uh, a schedule that keeps kids entertained, something like that, right? And the way that I'm, I'm looking at these to get ideas of what they want, they like printable, they like easy, they like daily, etc. And then we could take homeschool now schedule, and we're gonna come into questions, and here I'm looking on these topics, and I wanna see what the, the searcher intent is. And so I see, oh, they maybe are searching per grade. So maybe now I wanna say, you know, uh, homeschool schedule for 10th grade, 9th grade, 8th grade, something like that. But I guess as a side note here, um, I've usually found that not to be a winning strategy to go 10th grade, 9th grade, 8th grade, or best uh, basketballs for seven year olds, eight year olds, nine year olds. That hasn't worked as well as taking pockets because the search volume usually ends up being too low when we're going that granular on topics. And so usually I'd say 
homeschool schedule for middle school age or for elementary age, things like that. I think that's probably going to work better. But this allows me to see the psyche of what somebody's looking for when they search it. And so now I'm gonna take this and the information there. I'm gonna take the biggest pockets and I'm gonna craft titles that would be neat resources for these people with this problem. So Ahrefs can really help us to understand some broad looks at a niche much more than when you're in Google search and you're just doing auto suggest, you're just uh, doing partial searches and you're uh, seeing pieces to the puzzle and you just have to slowly piece it together. This can give you a quick look.